Hey guys, do you know what the gospel is? That is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go over three easy steps to understand the gospel, who fulfilled it, and how we can live it out today. So come join us, the Sisterhood Coalition, on this topic today. So what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 says, Christ died for our sins. According to scripture, he was buried and raised on the third day. So this takes us into our first step. It's admitting and believing. Admitting and believing what I just read, that we are sinners according to scripture, and that our sins separate us from God. That sin needs a blood sacrifice to atone for our sins, and we I've seen this in the Old Testament, these sacrifices, um, but it didn't root out the sinful human nature. So that's where the good news of the gospel of Jesus comes in. He became this sinless, pure sacrifice for our sins that nothing else, no animal, nothing could fulfill. Um, and Jesus's message on earth even was declare, declared, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. So it is this turning away from sin, repentance of our sin, admitting and believing that we are sinful and that we need a savior. And that is the key to understanding the gospel without believing that Jesus's death paid for all of our sins and the repentance, which is the admitting that, the, that we are sinful. We cannot have this salvation. Um, so we first must believe in Jesus and his sacrifice for our sins. So now that we've kind of understood this admitting and believing, we're going to go into the second step, which is declaring and confessing. This is key to our salvation as well. And Liz is going to explain how this is a key element to the gospel message. Yeah, this is this part's really, really cool because there's some really great scriptural evidence that kind of, you know, paints the picture of this for us. So basically when we are declaring and confessing, we are confessing with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. It's not enough for us to just say, Oh, I believe in God. Like Jesus is the way. And so like even James two nineteen tells us, you believe that there is one God good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Like we have to declare and confess that Jesus is Lord. And so we're going to see that there are two major pieces to our salvation um, spoken of in Romans 10, 9 through 10. It says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And so that kind of paints that picture for us here. And I want to touch on the importance of declaring and confessing because there's something else that happens when we confess that Jesus is Lord. So what exactly happens when we confess? Well, first John 4, 15 and 17 says, whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So the word abide here that we're talking about is the meaning to live or to dwell. So when we are confessing that Jesus is the son of God, then God comes to live inside of us. He dwells inside of us. God abides in him and he abides in God. So then we abide in God. We live with him where we have this amazing connection that happens as soon as we profess. And by confessing Jesus as Lord, we receive an incredible gift, which is the Holy Spirit. So God's spirit comes to live inside of us. That's how he, he abides in us. And this doesn't happen until we profess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. Um, the second part of first um, John four fifteen and 17, I'm catching up here. So it's, so we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love and whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. And by this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. So we can have confidence on the day of judgment because Jesus has taken our sin and shame paid the price for it on the cross, placed his Holy Spirit inside us and has made us a new creation. That means the old you has died. It's gone. And the new person has come. So the new person, we put on this new person and therefore 
so in second Corinthians five seventeen says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old is gone and the new is here. So the old you gets to pass away, gets to die, gets to be nailed with Jesus on the cross so that you can become this new person. It's, it's so incredible. Um, the gift that God gives us in that. And, um, if you're just starting out and, and learning about salvation and you want to know more, um, I really highly men- recommend, um, reading second Corinthians chapter five, read that whole chapter because it really captures salvation in such a beautiful way. Um, and then I just want to end here with or wrap up here with the last part of first John four fifteen and 17. It says, as he is, so also are we in this world. And that means as a new creation, God's characteristics can shine through us. So that means because he is loving, you can be loving. Because he is patient, you can be patient. Because he is peace, you can be peaceful. Because he is strong, you can have strength. That's what as he is, so also are we in this world means. And I hope that just that is encouraging to you because what an incredible gift. And I'm going to just, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and pass this off to Val to wrap us up with the, our third step here, which is just walking victory. It's, this is, this is the good news coming right up here. (laughs) Yeah, this is the exciting part. This is what we, what we get to become the new creation. We have the hope of the future, the future restoration, the redemption of our souls. Like these are the cool things. But another thing is, and why Jesus came is for the forgiveness of sins. That's the biggest thing. That's his mission. That was to to reunite us with the father, right? So we have to look on the lamb who was pierced for us and embrace him by faith as our only protection from God's wrath. Otherwise we're under wrath. And that's, uh, and that's, that's motivation. I mean, I don't want to be hell and brimstone, but that's motivation for us to come to God too. not just what do I get? It's what is he, his love redeemed me from his love has redeemed me from sin and the wrath that is to come and living under God's protection is like so incredible as a Christian. Like if you don't have that protection and that favor, you know, we, we see what happens all throughout the old Testament when people aren't having God's protection and favor, like the sons of Korah and different things that happen to them it's like, to live under that is amazing. It's so huge. And, um, I just wanted to talk quickly about kind of what, what Liz said too, about, um, remaining in Christ. So John Calvin once noted, as long as Christ remains outside of us and we are separate from him, All that he has suffered and all that he has done for the salvation of the human race will remain useless and of no value for us. So it is, it's a very personal thing. It's an invitation that we have and we get to accept that invitation and that adoption as children and and sons and daughters of God, or we get to reject that invitation. And just like knowing about someone is different than knowing someone. And so making that distinction, we have to accept him as our personal Passover lamb um, to get all the benefits and all the favor um, of God and to stand before our great God, our ancient father one day, and to be known as blameless and pure and right in the, in the sight of God. No man can say that only Jesus can, but when we accept the, the robe of righteousness that we get from Jesus, we get to stand in placement of God that way. And that's a huge victory without Jesus doing what he did for us. We would go down to shield just like every, everybody else. We have an invitation to accept. And that's what the gospel is about. Will you accept the invitation? Will you admit I, I am messed up. I need to be healed and made whole. I need a personal friend to not just walk with me, but to indwell me. And that's what I think, Liz, that you're talking about. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit that confirms our salvation and our adoption and our sonship with the Father, and then walking that out into our daily lives. I want to read to you Exodus 13, um, 8. Um. On that day, tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. 
This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead that the law of the Lord is to be on your lips. So the, the hand and the forehead, this is like what you're doing should reflect Christ in your life. What you're thinking about should reflect Christ in your life. What your lips say, what you're teaching your sons and your daughters. It's not just like a belief system, like sure. Okay. This is like something that you're daily choosing and you're daily walking out. Um, and so that is where our victory comes is from knowing deeply the love of God and what we've been ransomed from at a really high price. Absolutely. That's great. And yeah, that is the invitation that we're offering today is that you would know your father. Um, and, you know, as you walk this process again, it's admit and believe, admitting and believing that Jesus Christ died um, for your sin, that he was the ultimate sacrifice, um, that we couldn't obtain salvation any other way, that there was a pure sacrifice that needed to be made and um and jesus was that sacrifice and then as liz said um declaring and confessing that with our mouth confessing that out to be that we are we believe that jesus christ died for us that he rose again that now our sin is absolved and that we can walk in this victory and this freedom to serve the lord well and to serve the lord between these two gardens that um, is talked about through Eden, where the sin came, and the end result in Revelation, we are walking in the new Eden. Um, we are walking this in between time right now, but we can walk in victory because of what Jesus did for us. So be encouraged today that you, um, your salvation is the key to walking this victorious life, and only through Christ can you receive that salvation. So, um, yeah, guys, if you have any questions or if you have anything or prayer or if you want to accept Christ as your Savior today, notate it in the bottom and we would love to pray with you. We'd love to re reach out to you in any way that we can because God is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life that Jesus is. And no, we can't get to the Father except through, um, through Jesus. So, um, yeah, we can't wait to talk to you. And we will talk to you again soon, though. Bye, guys. Have a good one.